Morning everybody and welcome to another video. Today is quite a um, like a big job day to be fair. I'm going to get in the Type R now and drive up to my dad's work and get it up on a ramp because we're going to be changing the clutch. We're going to be possibly putting in some poly bush inserts into the engine mount. And we're also going to be possibly putting in some stainless steel subframe collars. Now I'll talk to you about all those things and why we're putting them in and what they do. Uh, well you know what a clutch does. Maybe you don't. I'll explain that when we get there and when we're doing it. First, I need to set off and running fashionably late as usual. So um, yeah, I'll see you when we when we get there. Right, so we're here now. The car's literally just on the ramp, ready to go up, just off the floor. In the engine bay first, first thing we're going to do, because we're going to sort the clutch out first, I need to remove the HKS intake. Battery needs to come out because shifter cables are underneath and they need to be disconnected. And there's probably going to be some bolts above gearbox-wise that we need to, to access. So I'm going to do that first. My dad's going to knock some wheels off, and then we're going to send it up and have a look underneath. Right, so we've got everything out of the way, battery's out, battery tray as well. We took the intake out up to the throttle body, left that there. Um, and the bracket for the heat shield as well, taken that out just to get full access. These are your shifter cables, which I've not taken these off before, but we're looking at it and it's looking like there's a pin here and a pin here that needs removing. And then you've got these two slide sliding pins here that are on these brackets. So they'll need to come out of there so we can release the cables and they can move further back into the bay. If you grab all your pin there, yeah. with that, and see this, you see this bit here? Yeah. That tail bit wants to come out. Oh, and unhook. And let the straight bit out. Okay, right, fair enough. This way around, all the way around. You all right, yeah? Come on. Put it out, yeah? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, hook pin. That's it, so. I don't want to lose it. Yeah. Let Butch go grab now. Probably pull that with your fingers now, can't yeah. you? Hey. Okay. That should come off. Yeah, that's loose now, isn't it? So you need to do the same with that pin. Yeah. And then these need to come up. Just for the sake of showing how it's done, shall we try and do this first? And do. And then well, I can do the one we are having to. Yeah, you need to try and grab hold of it with your pliers and wiggle it. Right. Oh. You got it. I don't mind you pulling it out. There you go. Just a clip. It's got it. Oh, you want to come up on that and back a bit on that, free it up. Oh, that'll be easy. Yeah. Like here, right, right. right, so they're both now removed up and out of the way. Just back here, we've took them out of the way. On top of the gearbox is a couple of plugs. My dad was saying something about that one being a, re a reverse switch, so we're going to unplug this one. And is there another one? Oh, yeah, there's another one down here as well. Basically, we're trying to make it as accessible as possible so that when we're underneath, if the gearbox needs to drop down, it's not connected anywhere up top. So that's the plan. Before I take this out, my dad's here, tell, obviously. If you've seen other videos, you'll have already seen my dad up with a lot of stuff. But if not, he's kind of the bloke on the channel that everybody refers to as a legend because he knows everything about cars. <laughs> it is what it is. I'm still the, you're still the sensei and I'm still the um, young grasshopper. And that one's broke, so. You good? Got it. Like that. Right, so we've got this 36 mil bolt at nut here that my dad's already actually loosened and taken off. That can be a bit of a bugger because it's obviously, um, what's that called where it's notched? Uh, it's notched it's in. It's just notched in, yeah, but if you get an impact gun on it, it'll fetch it straight up. Yeah, luckily we had an airline, so it's quite a powerful gun. So that's come off, you need to put that on both sides. What we're planning on doing now is under here, you see you've got the two bolts that we use when we put the coilovers on, both of these bolts need to come out so that we can swing this arm out and as we do this drive shaft will come or the splines will come out of the hub and then they'll be loose and then we don't have to take them out of the gearbox or anything like that. Gearbox can come down, we can access the clutch easier. That sound good to you? Yeah sounds good to me. I've actually got some spare gearbox oil so we're going to use the drain plug um, and drain this out because it'll, it'll help with gear changes anyway putting some fresh oil in I haven't done that since we went on track at Rockingham a couple of years ago anyway so we'll drain that out here I've got some fresh oil to go in and that's just something else for another peace of mind whilst we're here
Now, if you're doing this on your drive, what I did is I had a, a socket uh, wrench with a breaker bar I had to do it because my gun wasn't strong enough. Obviously, because we've got an air feed gun, it's going to be strong enough to do it. So that's a, that is a 19, isn't it? Yeah. So you've got a 19 bolt. And a 22 mil nut. 22 mil nut on the other side. <coughs> so there's one underneath, but I'm going to get ready to hold the hub just in case. When, you, when it comes off. Right, so that's that out now. Got the two bolts out. What we had to do was take this one bolt out of here for the brake line that comes over the top on these. It might not be in the same position on normal suspension, but uh, it'll be in a similar position. So that's down there out of the way. You've also got the ABS sensor that was clipped in there on this little tab. And then at the back, it the rubber, there's like a rubber section here that clips in there. Basically unclip as much as you can of the ABS sensor so then that doesn't take any slack. And then now all the tension is just on this bottom arm instead. And then that's out ready to go. I'm just gonna do that on the other side to mirror it. Then when the gearbox comes down, it's not gonna be in the hub anymore and getting stuck. Right, so we've just done this. We'll put it back just to show you. It's probably easy if, you want, if you've got a pry bar like this, you can actually take the drive shaft out to get it out of the way. You just pull it through um, in between the bar arm and the drop link and you can pull that straight out and then that's out of your way. And what were you saying about this pushing? The sail clip on the end of the drive shaft, so that's yeah. what holds the drive shaft into the gearbox. Right, okay. So as well, I've got the pry bar and just pushing back, all I was doing was pulling this sail clip through the uh, the locking mechanism. Right, okay. okay. Fair enough. Right, so now that's taken out of the hub, as you come across here, this drive shaft's a lot longer, so you've got a drive shaft support there, here bearing in. So that's got a bolt for a heat shield, which is that one. Then you've got a couple of bolts above, above, and then some, and then one underneath, or two underneath as well, under there, which is gonna be hard to get to. But then obviously that drive shaft then goes we'll there, yeah. into the gearbox, which that's where we're gonna take it out from. Yeah. So let's try and get to these ones and see what we can do. This is why I need some ratchet spanners. Yeah. This is what, yeah. I've got one that's a 10 mil. So that's one bolt there, one next to it. And then there's a couple above as well. Yeah. No, it's just them. Uh, yeah, there's one more above. One more above. We've taken the heat shield off, which was one bolt underneath. There was one bolt way around the top of the heat shield above. And then one over here, which we accessed from looking through uh, the wheel arch, which I'll quickly show you whilst my dad's taking this off to be fair. So that's that heat shield that goes around the drive shaft. So you've got the bottom bolt, like I said, that I could get to easily. That one, that one which we're a bit of a reach over to get. And then this one on this tab here, which like we went through the wheel arch to get to. Fine, so you need to go over the shaft at that end, because yeah. I'm going to guide it your out. So the support's free, the support yeah. bearing's all free. Yeah, yeah. We're going to slide the uh, drive shaft out of the gearbox on it. Towards it's me. Yeah, it's going. You come in. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. Right, you got it? Yeah, keep going. She's out. Alright, one sec, because I'm gonna just rest it a second. Keep feeding, keep feeding. Keep feeding. Have you got it on the brand? Yeah. So right now we're gonna separate the gearbox from the engineer. So you've got some bolts around here that we're just gonna try and work out and work his way around. And then there's some further ones up top here that we need to get to. So I have had to take there was an earth cable connected there, if you can see it. That's the cable that I've taken away. That was going. That goes up towards the gearbox up here. So disconnected that so that when it drops down, it's still not attached. Right. So it's in the passenger side wheel arch here. If you look through, just explain what this line is. So you've got your clutch line, clutch fluid line. Yeah. So obviously when you operate your clutch pedal, pushes on fluid to operate your clutch. Yeah. Well, we need to disconnect this. So what we're going to do is we're going to clamp the pipe off. We're then going to disconnect the line and then pull the clip out. So then it will release this flexer away from the gearbox. You're going right. to lose a bit of fluid, but we can just top it up. It's no yeah. problem. Fair enough. And what did you say? Brake fluid is clutch fluid? Yeah, brake fluid is clutch fluid. Fair. Same thing. Fair enough. I'd have filmed every nut and bolt that come into taking this out, but there was that much to sort out and that much to do. Uh, we needed to just crack on time-wise as well. It needed to come out. Uh, one thing I will say, we were, there's a bolt that goes into the starter motor, the lower bolt comes out, the one above you don't need to take out because we spent a lot of time trying to get that out and we couldn't get to it, but it doesn't connect them, the bottom bolt does in the starter motor. But yeah, you've had multiple bolts all the way around here, there's loads of um, mounting brackets, that, that one you can see in the engine bay, we had to take that out because 
the thread was coming through and it wouldn't come through so we had to tear that bracket off as well just a lot of messing about but we've got the new release bearing my dad's greasing that up ready to go in now one thing i will say that i've been told by everybody is get a genuine honda release bearing because we got the exedi kit uh, which is from rhd performance who have very kindly provided us with these uh, subframe collars as well so if we get a chance we're going to pop those in but yeah highly recommend that company they've been brilliant for me with me from day one sent me this kit and this um release this is the release bearing that comes with the Exedi kit but i've been told that they can be quite noisy quite early on so that can be you can do what you want with that you can chuck it in bin you can sell it on ebay do whatever you want but we're putting a genuine on the one in so that's just for peace of mind so when the gearbox is off, this is going to be your clutch plate that's behind this pressure plate. So the bolts that go all the way around, we're just trying to find a bit for them because they look like torque bolts, but we'll get that off and then you'll be able to see the clutch. That's the replacement one that we're putting on, and that'll be the replacement clutch plate that we're putting in. Right, so how can you tell that this is the old one that's just come off and this is the brand new that's coming on? That one you shake, there's no noise. Springs yeah. are loose. Yeah. But if you look in here, the rivets. Oh, they've got grooves, haven't they? It, where the rivets are though, look at the rivets. There's a depth of clutch plate. Yeah, right. they're nearly touching. It's oh nearly got, God. it's nearly touched the clutch. If that, if you used it, if you did a track day with that, it would have gone a flywheel because you would have damaged flywheel. Yeah. So we're very, very close. It's a good job that Area Motorsport pointed it out, to be fair. Okay, it's now the next day. I'm sorry that light took a turn really dramatically. Um, as you could probably tell by the filming style of the day, uh, we were kind of getting pushed for time. It was more a case of me mumbling, trying to talk about what we were doing um, instead of being able to get nice angles and show you everything we were doing. But I, I feel like we pretty much covered most things, but as you can tell, it, it was quite a big job. Uh, bigger than we'd expected at the time as well. So after the point that you saw, we put everything in that we needed to. We didn't do the polybush inserts and we also didn't do the stainless steel subframe collars which will then be individual videos and they are things that I feel like I can do in my own time at home as well. So nothing to worry about there. We went into speed mode, hardly spoke and pretty much just like tried to put it all back together as fast as possible. Lifting that gearbox back in, we were proper, proper struggling. Um, we got, I, I eventually got it there, I held it in place. My dad put the bolt in, tightened it, well not tightened it up, but got it so it was threaded, it didn't move. I dropped to the floor on my knees and my dad just like started having a walk around, he was like, no. And I, we, we come, <laughs> it was horrible, horrible. So definitely have an extra pair of hands when you're doing that kind of job. But it's in and as you could tell from the difference between the clutch plates there was definitely going to be a difference in the drive of the car and it's smooth as butter now it's so much better so if you're worried about it being really notchy like too notchy and too forceful and you're crashing gears a lot which i would do nearly every drive the clutch is a good place to start i think um, which i never thought about before i just thought synchro problems i can't afford to change them it is what it is but obviously the clutch was quite a big problem in that scenario i still it still feels a little bit more difficult in third than the rest of the gears but i wouldn't say it feels difficult um and the rest of them are, are, are slick um and the throws easier as well that's smoother because obviously we've changed the gearbox oil as well so yeah loads happier with it and i'm looking a lot more forward to when we get to Croft now. So it's just giving me that peace of mind for when we're on track, the car's up to scratch maintenance wise, which is the most important thing in front of uh, power modifications, in front of handling. If the car's gonna break down and the car's not safe, all those things are redundant. So yeah, maintenance is key. Now, if you did enjoy this video, Hey, or you enjoy any of my videos please like or subscribe to the channel and click the little bell button so it reminds you when a fresh video does come on so you don't miss any upcoming videos leave in the comments any any jobs that you've done where you thought this is going to be easy and it turns out being a big job where extra hours are involved and it just is what it well that's kind of most car maintenance and modifications really in it but what's the worst one you've had so i'll leave it at that and until next time guys like you always say enjoy the rest of your day bye